Welcome to the Great Loop Radio Podcast, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. My name is Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. Today, we have a great topic for you. We have a New York Harbor tugboat captain who's going to join us and tell us a little bit about what these towboat captains would like loopers and other recreational vessel captains to know, um, because most of us probably in our average boating before we start the Great Loop aren't dealing so much with commercial traffic. We want to make sure we're being courteous and safe, but we don't always know what we don't know. So uh, Joe is going to join us to talk about that. Before I bring Joe in, I want to take a moment to recognize and thank our Admiral sponsors who support AGLCA at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes and Associates, Great Loop Yacht Sales, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners and viewers to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. And with that out of the way, I'd like to introduce Joe Moseri. Joe, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. And as Appreciate I mentioned, it. Joe is a tugboat captain. He operates primarily in New York Harbor and I believe Long Island Sound as well, correct? Uh, well, actually the whole East Coast and, and uh, the, the Gulf Coast too, anywhere from Brownsville, Texas to Eastport, Maine. It depends. Yeah. I work for a very diverse company. Well, and uh, Joe is um, coming to us from his boat. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and your, your experiences um, on the water. Um, well, it all started. I grew up in a commercial fishing family. Uh, both my parents are immigrants from Sicily. They came over here in the 50s, uh, the American dream. My father bought his first boat and I grew up basically on his boat. That's where I learned how to walk. So I, my whole life growing up for the first 16 years of my life, 18 years of my life, what do you want to do? I want to be a fisherman. I want to be a fisherman. Well, that kind of petered out with government regulations, overfishing. So I was working on deck for him and I used to see tugboats on the, on the horizon. Um, and my uncle used to razz me. Uh, I thought you were going to do that. And so I made it a life mission to prove him wrong. And I got a job <laughs> offer to go to the Gulf of Mexico in 1996 to work for a company. They were going to pay for all my licensing and everything and give me a job. And that's where I got started and worked my way up the ladder, what we call a hawse piper, starting from the bottom, working your way up. Wow. And, and most of us who, um, you know, have pleasure boats that are still working, I'm lucky I have a fabulous job, but a lot of people kind of look at your job and think, wow, it could be on the water. Um, Tell us what a normal day for a tugboat captain is like. Is there such a thing as a normal day? Um, yeah, it's, now every day is different, but it's the same, if that makes sense, okay? So we work on here, we work a 12 on, 12 off schedule. I have a mate that runs the boat for me from midnight to noon. I get up at noon and run it till midnight. Um, depending upon what our orders are, the reason why the company I work for, we do different stuff. So that's what I like. I don't like repetitive stuff. It gets boring to me. So every day is a different challenge and this type of work is very challenging. So um, right now we're moving sand aggregate from down here in Perth Amboy, New Jersey to the coast of uh, to Stanford, Connecticut, which is, you know, Long Island Sound is pleasure boat heaven, especially on the weekends. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of loopers don't actually get to Long Island Sound. They're heading nope. up the Hudson. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, they're coming through New York Harbor. Being there at the Statue of Liberty is is one yep. of the highlights. And and you, with parents as immigrants, I'm sure recognize why that's such a hard uh, highlight for mm -hmm. so many people. Um, you know, it, it it seems like New York City and, and New York Harbor. What a place <laughs> to be a commercial yeah. captain. So, you know, what's the best part of your job? Well, uh, I, don't know. I I just love what I do. The hardest mm -hmm. part is being away from home. You know, I've missed so much with my kids. And I, for the longest time, I've worked 28 days on, 14 off for the last 25 years. My kids are grown now. Daughter's out of college. My son started his own career. Um, so I, um, now I've been able to financially switch my schedule to an equal time schedule. So now I'm at home a little bit more. I work 28 days on, 28 days off. But now my kids are grown. I don't get to see them. But it's nice I get to spend time with my wife. I like um, the uh, I like the um, the challenge of it. I'll challenge myself every day. You know, uh, yeah. I'll do something that scares me a little bit because I I wouldn't say I'm an adrenaline junkie, but mm -hmm. I'd like to challenge myself to get a little better. Yeah. Every day. I'm proud well, of what I do. You. 
thank you for what you do, um, because it really is part of what keeps this this country going. And I think most loopers recognize that when we're seeing um, the commercial traffic on the waterways. Um, you know, it's nice to see things moving, especially, you know, after COVID when nothing was moving for quite some time. Um, I didn't it's lose nice a to kind of see that. That's wonderful to hear. We were lucky. We didn't lose a beat with COVID. Um, so yeah. I don't know anything about the lockdowns. I didn't get to experience that. My family did, but I still steady worked. Yeah. And we, we were lucky. We would, you know, the crew on the boat, we were kind of quarantined. It's just the four mm -hmm. of us. We don't go anywhere. The only thing yeah. we do is one guy will go grocery shop and that was our only weak point. And that's only mm -hmm. twice twice during our 28 day hitch. So that was our yeah. only weak point. So we we're pretty uh, quarantined by ourselves. Yeah, well, I'm sure to some people, it sounds like the dream job and I'm sure others are, are kind of amazed by the dedication and effort it takes. But, you know, this conversation actually started, I reached out to you after you posted to our Facebook group with something you wanted recreational vessels to know. Um, and I thought it was a great post and it was, um, framed very much as education for those of us who don't typically interface with commercial traffic. Um, so let's start there. You know, tell us about your post. You talked a little bit about the vulnerability of your boat when somebody is uh, coming up behind you. So let's let's start yeah. there. So I know that people think we're rough and tumble and, you know, we're, we're tough and but there are some weak points. Um, one of the major weak points is when we're what we call push gear. We're behind the barge and we have face wires up. Now, these vice wires are only an inch and a quarter in diameter. They're very strong, but they don't handle well to snatching, which snatching means going slack and pulling tight. And that's when they're tight, they're, they're strong. But when they snatch like that, that's when they snap. So when you come up from behind and you're throwing anything more than a two foot wake, and that's my limit. You know, you may have a smaller one that's, that's less. You may have a bigger vessel that has pins and they go out in 20 foot seas and continue to push. So, you know, um, but that wake, causes um you know what yarring is you, you probably all know what it's like to have a stern sea you know the vessel mm -hmm. goes the stern of the boat goes down the bow goes forward now if you're attached to something it hinges and it causes those lines to go slack and snatch and it can mm -hmm. be very dangerous now if i'm making about seven or eight knots and one of my lines parts that could cause me to be drugged by the barge pulled sideways and cause me to flip over wow. you know that, that's so the drastic that's the most drastic um, we take precautions to you know to alleviate that by putting out safety lines if one of our lines breaks we have at least something to keep us from from rolling over sideways um, mm -hmm. but that is the weakest point if you're pulling up from behind us not so much coming at us or going across our bow but from behind it's very very tender okay so that great to know i think most people yeah. probably don't realize that um you know we we kind of preached the VHF is, you know, the best thing you can do is to communicate with any of the commercial traffic nearby. Um, but, you know, tell us so that we know what to be prepared for. If we are coming up behind a tow that is pushing a barge or series of barges, how should I, we go about approaching so I got a lot of comment. I got a lot of comments from people mm -hmm. um, saying that, oh, I didn't realize that. Um, I thought I was going to get that bastard, to be honest with you. You know how Facebook can be. You always have to oh, show yes. <laughs> not one person gave me any grief about it. It was all good, positive. Thank you so much. That's a mm -hmm. great help. Um, a lot of people said, I'm afraid they're going to get irritated if I call them on 13. Channel 13 is where you'll find most commercial traffic. Yes, right. they're supposed to listen to 16, but 16 is just hailing distress. It's supposed to switch to another channel. So we do all our traffic which, you know, uh, meeting people on th channel 13. Okay. Um, and a lot of people were afraid that, you know, can I call on 13? Yes, please, please call on 13. We will yes. greatly appreciate it. Um, and the captain may say, no, you're not going to bother me. Just keep it coming. You know, just contact with them. If you're not in contact with them, just slow down. Keep, keep steerage on, but, you know, slow your wake down because ultimately yeah. you're responsible for your own wake. You know, if your wake goes five miles and it's still your wake that tore up a dock and they can prove that, you're still responsible for it. So the best approach then, if, if you're approaching a commercial boat, um, particularly a tug that's got some barges they're pushing, um, hail on 13 for to arrange for a safe pass. But, um, you know, if, if for some reason you can't communicate on, on the VHF, which really should never happen, but if for some reason you can't, um, yes. is the best approach really to just pass slowly um you yep. know any other recommendations on how we can keep you safe and keep the rest of the harbor safe too 
Sure. As slow as you can go to maintain passage speed. You know, we understand that if you, if you go slower than we are, you're obviously not going to throw a weight, but you're not going to pass us. We understand that you have to get by us, you know, so just uh, go slow, pick a good point to do it. Don't do it in a turn or something like that. Um, um, yeah. And just, just maintain good contact. That's all. Yeah. And again, the communication is really um, the biggest Key. thing. And, um, yes. you know, we've, we've done, gosh, six or 7,000 miles at this point. Um, never had an issue with a commercial captain when we radioed. They would prefer to know, we always ask them, you know, what do you want us to do um, mm -hmm. and ask for instructions. But, um, you know, short of that, uh, friendly, friendly people who are, you know, know the, the waterways and, and want to help. So sure, we always preach. Wrong. Yeah. Um, what else would you want recreational vessels to know and understand about towboats and how to deal with them? I know you also yeah. kind of mentioned um, sight lines. Um, yes. So I was like, um, I was pushing a barge and I can see over it, but the height that I can see, I literally can't see three quarters of a mile in front. So if you can't see me sitting in the chair physically, me as a person, mm -hmm. I can't see you. Same thing as a tr trucker. If you can't see their mirrors, they can't see you. So that's basically it. You know, just don't cut across my bow. If you're coming at me, you know, when I can see you make your course change. So I know what you're doing, you know, don't mm -hmm. make, three degrees, make a good 10 degree course change. So I know which direction you're going in time too, not a hundred foot in front of me. I want you to do this a mile in front of me, mm -hmm. you know, don't go crazy. Yeah. But if you're in a channel, get to your side of the channel or whichever one that you, you decided with the person on the radio, if you get radio contact. Yeah. And I think one of the things you just said that I would, I just want to reiterate um, last week, we talked a little bit um, with a Coast Guard auxiliarist about kind of the rules of the road and, and, you know, hopefully the people out there already know them, but it's a refresher. And for those who are still planning, it's good information. Um, but one of the things that you just said um, that I want to reiterate because it came in that conversation too is make your movements, um, you know, if, if, if make them definite, you know, don't slow down slightly to where the other boat can't really tell if you've slowed down. Um, you yeah. know, you just said, if you're going to turn, make a big turn <laughs> so I can tell yeah. if that's what you're doing. Um, and I think that's great advice and it's not something i had really heard much about before so i appreciate you sharing that and, and that's not just with tow boats that's yeah. just that's boating in general let yeah. them know your 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 attentions by you know your course change or maintain radio contact yeah. if you can't then you know let them know what your your intention is by making you know 10 15 20 degree course change okay um you know any other tips for boating in New York Harbor specifically, um, you know, it's obviously um, a busy port. That, another question I got was, mm -hmm. now can I call vessel traffic service being a recreational vessel? Will I get in trouble or will someone get mad? I don't know the legal answer to that, but I have mm -hmm. heard them call before and they've been more than polite to tell you, you know, who's, who's coming your way. Pretty much just have to tell them what you are, where you are, and they'll let you know, especially if you don't have an AIS, they'll let you know who's, you know, heading your way where they're going, which chances are you probably won't. If you're not from around here, you're not going to know where they're going, but at least mm -hmm. you'll know what's coming at you. Okay. You know, and it's yeah. a big help. Yeah. And for those who haven't been in the area and don't know how to call vessel traffic services, what's the procedure for that? Okay. So if you come up through the main channel, the, the Verrazano uh, mm -hmm. Narrows, that'll be channel 14, um, to vessel traffic service. Okay. Now you're going, you, loopers will go up to Hudson, um, Anything after the Holland Tunnel ventilators traffic doesn't. Um, the East River is Channel 12, but then the Arthur Kills, which is the backside of Staten Island, is also Channel 12. So there's two different channels in three different areas. Okay. And but so for most loopers coming, you know, under the Varanzano Bridge, it's 14, did you say? Channel 14 for the vessel traffic, 13 for bridge to bridge traffic. Perfect. Um, so, you know, as you just kind of outlined, um, most loopers are coming through the Verrazano Narrows, headed for the Statue of Liberty for that photo op, um, right can, continuing on, um, you know, are there any portions of that particular route that they should, you know, have an extra heads up or are there any places that they should completely avoid as they're kind of making that um, voyage I would, your harbor? Not, not avoid, although these waterways are all for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Where the, the now you, you come through the Verrazano Narrow Bridge, the Staten Island is on your left, and then you have a waterway called the Kills. A lot of shipping traffic coming out of there. So your best bet is to get on your red side of the channel and just stay out of the way of that traffic. 
You keep the anchorage on your right and run up that red side and you'll be fine. Then just watch out for the ferry traffic at Lower Manhattan because they're all over the place. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take a break and play a message okay. from one of our sponsors and we'll come back and just um, see if there's anything else you would like us to know that we can make the trip uh, more pleasurable and safe for everyone. So we'll be back in a moment. The LAD product line offers stress-free, restful nights while you are away from your boat. LAD is an independent, self-controlled device that continuously monitors your boat's list, position, and more. Your LAD will send you an alert via text and email from anywhere in the world of a potential problem on your vessel. When connected to the boat network, LAD will also monitor bilge pumps, refrigerator, battery voltage, shore power disconnect, intruder alarm, smoke, fire, and more. Set your own alerts, add alert recipients, geofence, and track your vessel's position via a secure online map page. LAD never sleeps, so you can. Please visit www.ladalert.com for more information. Welcome aboard What Yacht to Do. Sam and Rev have completed two loops with videos of each trip on YouTube. Now, their goal is to help you prepare for your trip. Their services include online courses, coaching, training, and boat delivery. You can prepare for the loop from the comfort of your own home with their online introductory courses. You get a digital workbook and a way to interact and ask questions. You'll even receive a certificate of completion. Go now and sign up for our free newsletter at whatyachttodo.com or greatloopacademy.com, and they'll send you some free boating goodies. We're back on Great Loop Radio. We're having a chat today with Joe Moseri. He is a tugboat captain in New York Harbor, um, and he has been very gracious in helping all of us learn how we can best make sure that everyone stays safe in New York Harbor. The recreational vessels, the commercial captains, um, you know, probably didn't occur to most of us that we could actually, with our boats, do damage or make it dangerous for a tugboat that's pushing some barges found out that we can, and that's great information because we certainly don't want to do that. Um, you know, we, we've had a pretty good conversation. Um, what's the the absolute number one most important thing for loopers to remember when they're in a busy harbor like New York? Radio contact, mm -hmm. you know, know your rules of the road. If, if you can't maintain contact with somebody, stick to the rules of the road. Because chances are everyone who runs a tugboat is a licensed captain. They know their rules of the road and they'll stick to their side of the channel. Or, you know, if it's an overtaking situation, they'll know what to do. Just brush up on your rules of the road. And one more thing for new boaters. Mm -hmm. Please check the weather before you go out into the ocean. I hear so many distress calls on Channel 16 of people that just under, you know didn't check the weather. And now they have to use resources for the Coast Guard to come out and help them search and rescue, you know, and that's, it's, um, it's unfortunate, you know, because the weather service is free. It's easy to check <laughs> with all apps and everything. Please check the weather before you go, please. It is. And, and for most of us, our goal is to never be out there when the weather is bad. Um, I, for one, get seasick, so I avoid it at all costs. Um, but that is certainly kind of a number one goal of most loopers is to not be out there in bad weather. So of course, remember to check that. Um, we all make mistakes now and then, and, and, you know, on that mistake side, um, you know, we encourage and we expect people flying our burgee to be courteous, knowledgeable boaters and all of us make mistakes sometimes too. So, um, you know, Joe, you and I were chatting kind of before we started recording that when people do something discourteous. Um, we both agreed we like to think it's it's really out of lack of knowledge, not out of wanting mm -hmm. to be rude sure. or dangerous. Um, yeah. You know, but the bottom line is it is really helpful to know some of this information that I think even experienced loopers may not have heard before. Um, so I want to thank you, first of all, for your Facebook post, because it really enlightened a lot of people and it opened up this discussion. Great. Um, but also the way you posted it um, made it super um, engaging it made it super educational. Um, you know, you mentioned nobody kind of, um, you know, got harsh about it. And I think that all stems from the way you made the post. You didn't complain that somebody had done something um, wrong. You. you basically presented it as here's what you might not know and you should. Um, and it was awesome. So I just want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for spending some time while I know you're on your boat and probably have lots of things to do. Um, I, have, I have one more thing to yeah, please. New York Harbor, the currents run strong. Okay. If you guys are making people who are on a budget that are making the trip, do yourself a favor. Wait till flood tide before you come, come up 
the Narrows. And if you catch the beginning of the flood tide at the Verrazano Narrows Bridge and make six or seven knots, I'm not exactly sure, you will ride, if you're going to go all the way to Albany, you will ride that flood tide all the way to Albany. And you'll wow, save tremendous advice. amounts of fuel. Wonderful. We all like and that. That's just, especially years of running, just years of running up the, the Hudson. I've learned that, you know, um, yeah. because the, you could talk to half the fuel, the way the current runs around here, sometimes two, three knots. And you just be careful of those currents, especially in the East River. Hell's Gate, I wouldn't recommend going through there at max tide. It's a reason why they call it Hell's Gate. Right. <laughs> okay. Joe, thank you. I'm Joe Moseri. He is a tugboat captain in New York Harbor been an absolute pleasure we really appreciate the information and if you spot something else out there that you think we should know about please reach out we would love to do this again sometime thank you it's, it's all right appreciate it thank you joe be safe bye-bye bye-bye